Converted Man here, and I've got Captive Desk here, slash Dave. How's it going, slash Dave Desk? It's going well. How's everybody doing? Everybody. I don't know about everybody. I'm doing okay, though. <laughs> That's a lot of people to ask about. So we've got a Captive Desk. I, I tied myself to a desk. That was the best I could come up with. <laughs> what is captive desk? I must know. I almost figured it out, but then the men in black came and took me away. Yes. Uh, you told me what it was. It's very boring, but tell us what captive desk is. All right. Well, when I went to start my channel, I wanted to think of a name for it, obviously. And my name's Dave. And there's a million and one Daves, this and that, and everything else on YouTube. So. I figured I would just blend in with all the Daves. So I started, you know, well, I started thinking of some different things and everything. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll try an anagram. And the anagram came up with very little other than captive desk. And then I kind of said, well, you know what? Maybe it's kind of appropriate. You know, I want to, I want to listen to people and have a conversation and you know the captive desk you know it's i'm at the desk i'm captive i'll listen you know what i mean so i said well, hey and you know what there's only one captive desk on youtube so that works that works okay so now you said skeptic uh, as as a name and i i like the label of skeptic but maybe you didn't start there so were you raised in a religious uh, household at all? Were you exposed to religion at a young age? Or were you always non-theist? Tell us, tell us about this. Um, well, I have, uh, growing up in the 70s, um, you went to church. Um, everybody had a church. Um, I don't remember, like, you know, talking about religion with my friends or, or anything really that much, you know, me, you know, I, there's always a few friends that are very religious, you know, but yeah, going to church was just like something you did and everybody had a church, you know? So, uh, I went to a United Methodist church. It was very progressive and welcoming and open for the 1970s, mind you, you know, we're just coming out of civil rights movement and everything. And it was very diverse. And I th always thought, okay, well, this is what church is. You know, everybody in the neighborhood kind of comes together. And it's, you know, good, wholesome family time, you know, that kind of thing. Very uh, community-oriented. Yeah, it was, it was something, you know, it did. And, and um, you know, growing up, a, a lot of places weren't even open on Sundays. Right, right. You know, yeah. they, everybody just closed up at least the half the day or the whole day. And, you know, the, and you see a lot of that left over today. You know, a lot of places I've limited hours on Sunday. And it's just, yeah, it's people shut down and went to church. Did you, did your uh, family pray at dinner? Mm, no. Okay. So no, nothing like that. It was, we, it, we we chose a church. I um, the well the backstory was my mother was Catholic, my father was Protestant. So when they got married, you know, you kind of have to pick one, right? Right. So my mother decided she would convert to being a Methodist. So she went through them, you know, the conversion classes, you know, whatever they have, and she became a member. And then so that was our church. Uh, you know, my brother and I were baptized there. We went to Sunday school and uh, my mother would say, you need a place to be married and buried in. That was old school because, you know, that's that's what churches did. You know, they they took care of funerals and weddings. Right. Right. They're kind of I mean, the that's, event yeah. focus center thing. That's where you go to do the big events. Right. So my my mother. um even though I wasn't, you know, like I say, they never really pushed anything on us. And, you know, we were 
you know, when we were kids, you know what I mean? We'd rather stay home and watch cartoons or something than go to church, you know. But my mother uh, made me promise I would go at least through confirmation. And that was in eighth grade. And then you became a member. And then I did get married there because I'm a member of the church. And it is a beautiful old church. Um, all stonework and everything with some stained glass and everything. Be beautiful old church. And we had a lovely wedding there. Um, a lady minister presided over it. And she was super nice to us, even when my wife was, you know, a bit frazzled getting ready and everything, you know. And she let a, a few cuss words slip out of her mouth and, you know, and everything. The pastor was very understanding and everything. So it was a good experience. So were you still religious when you got married or did you already, uh, I mean, did it even really, in a way, it doesn't, I mean, did you get a Bible? Did you read uh, through the scriptures? I mean, it seems like you had very much of a, a, mu a muted uh, religious journey. It doesn't seem like it was uh, a I big bet. deal. Somewhere, somewhere on the desk here, I have my Bible. Oh, okay, so um, you, you get it when you I were... got, I yeah. I was pretty, yep, I had one, let's see, fifth, is it in fifth grade, maybe? My, I, I can't really say for sure, I'd have to look, I think the year is 78 in my Bible. Wow, that's as um, old as I am. <laughs> that's, that's when I got my Bible, and we, we put the uh, gold leaf on the front, you know, in, um, um, uh, Bible classes by a Sunday school and we all got and you know, wrote your name on it so I had the gold leaf name it's mostly worn off now but yeah right inside it says presented to David you know and it has the uh the stamp from the church and everything right so yep I still have it and I've read it and uh you know we you know like I say we went to church we went to Sunday school I confirmation was um uh, it was Bible study mostly. And then we also did a few, uh, um, oh, the word escapes me. Um, we visited, we visited, um, other, other beliefs and stuff. We went to some other churches. We went to a synagogue, you know, it was all, uh, we went to Columbus because that's where the big headquarters was for the Methodist church. And you learn about the church, and then yeah, then you go through, and then you're confirmed and become a member of the church. So it was a lot of Bible study and learning about the church and the history of it and all that kind of stuff. And then as far as my belief goes, yeah, it, it, it was always kind of you know loosely held. You know, it was like okay, there's a God. You know, okay, there was this Jesus story, and then you know grandma and and that would have uh the scene under the tree you know the uh birth scene and yeah. okay jesus was born in a manger and you know and stuff like that and then uh otherwise um you know yeah we would go like uh uh christmas and easter sometimes with the grandparents and stuff like that but it was all it was it was just like again it was like it was what you did Right. You know, I never, I never had it. Um, there was no hellfire, you know. I like I say, it was going to going to church. I, I have no ill will against anybody at the church. Yeah, it, it sounds like a, a positive uh, place and environment. And now, mm -hmm. but in your teenage years, uh, perhaps uh, this is when you know the rebellion began. Of course, that's when you turn to the satanic music or whatever, you know, something went wrong, of course. So what was it? Come on, admit it. Oh, I, <laughs> I, I, I have to admit it was Black Sabbath. I'm a Black oh, Sabbath. I knew it, see? Oh, I'm a Black God. Sabbath guy. Oh, yeah. The devil's music. Of course, everybody that doesn't know any better knows that Ozzy is a Christian. <clears throat> Say what you will. Yeah, so, but... Did, did you still uh, attend church regularly, even though you were a rebellious teenager? Or nope. That when Con you, uh, confirmation was my was my duty to honor my mother's wishes, and she never pressed me to go, and I never went back. 
until I got married. Ah. So now when you stopped going, it, you know, did your beliefs in God sort of fade away or did you notice <laughs> it? I mean, describe that process. Mm, like I say, there's always the, okay, there's a God in your head, right? And um, um, like I say, it, it was very loosely held, I guess I could say, you know, I, I, okay, there's a God, you know, but I didn't really, um, I didn't do the praying thing or, um, you know, I never had any experiences, you know, not in church or, or anything else. Um, and then I guess, you know, girls and cars and, you know, it was just, okay, well, you move on to teenage stuff, you know, and like teenagers, you stop doing so much stuff with, you know, the family all the time. You know what I mean? Right. You start, you start going, yeah, you start going to the movies with your friends rather than your mom and dad, you know, you're forming your own identity. You're trying right. to, you're becoming an adult. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a weird, a weird transition. I mean, it, I remember it feeling so, you know, like didn't know what was going on like half the time, and, but all that oh, yeah. energy and man, I miss that energy, <laughs> you know, but, um, yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, for me, I, I, I spend a lot of time and energy on, you know, thinking about God and praying to God and, and all that. And so, you know, this is a different story. I think it's as valuable because I would call it kind of an American uh, Christianity where, you know, it was very common. It's just, you know, you went on church on Sunday and, you know, you, you know, you put on your Sunday best and all that. And oh, yeah. I had yeah. I had I had a polyester uh, lime green suit with a uh, big collar polka dot shirt. Oh, yeah. I was all I 70. Am. I was 70s all the way. My dad had a, uh, a white belt and white shoes. And oh, yeah. Wow. Poly the polyester 70s. Oh, that stuff was awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, if, no, or... if, you, if you have never wore a polyester suit, imagine taking any, any suit and just starching it until it won't starch anymore. And that's what it's like wearing a polyester suit. Now, is it true back in those days that all churches had to have a disco ball uh, according to law? Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard I've heard that. That that must have been. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. Maybe your church didn't though. Uh, I did read that. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, there was you know there was a lot of rooms downstairs. You know, they, oh, they okay. Probably, you never know. You never know. Yeah. Did you do? Uh, you didn't. So you didn't do anything uh, like youth group or anything like that. Uh, uh, well, I I was in the choir. Okay. I All love right. to I love to sing. I still do. My you know my voice isn't what it was before I hit puberty, and puberty was another thing that kind of ruined uh, the one thing that I liked doing at church was being in the choir. And yeah, I hit puberty, and my voice cracked something awful. And hitting those high notes is impossible. You got to yeah, you're the, you're the low guy. You're the bass. The, the boy choir type sound. Oh. Yeah, it just doesn't you know suit the. Uh, the frog yeah. in the throat so yeah but yeah i did that that was something i did i did enjoy doing because i like i like music and uh you know i sing in the shower you know so was there a point when you just kind of said well that's it i mean what what happened to this you know you had this idea of god for such a, a while and well what happened what you know what made you start questioning it or or, or just starting, were you kind of like forgetting about it? I mean, there's, there's a bunch of things, you know, I, I like to say, you know, I, I still have my GI Joes, the, the 12 mm. inches, you know, the good old, and, yeah. you know, I, I played with them and played with them. And then one day I put them in a shoe box really nice and put them away and they're still in that shoe box, but I didn't throw them away. Hmm. 
You know what I mean? So you just stop playing with it. Yeah. Yeah. So God, okay. You know, again, you know, it's in your head and, you know, things might come up and you're, you know, you say, Oh God, you know, uh, I hope everything turns out. Okay. You know, somebody's in the hospital, you know what I mean? Hmm. And, and you, you know, you have the thoughts in your head, you know, Hey, you know, you know, Hey, if you're listening up there, you know, this person (laughs) might, you know, could use a little help, you know, but uh, like, again, nothing serious or nothing like that. So and then what, I had, I had a lot of other things too. Like I say, my, my mom and dad never pushed anything on me and my mom and dad, if, if we had an interest, they were supportive. So I got big into, I want this science magazine. I want that science magazine. I want this science kit. I want a telescope. I want a microscope. And they got me all those kind of things. And then another thing was I got into magic for a while. And every time I had a couple bucks in my pocket, there was a local magic shop that I could ride my bike to. And we would, if I had a couple bucks in my pocket, I was at the magic shop. And it was just fascinating learning on. And then, you know, the combination of those and then the, and then the idea that, uh, eat, you know, I'm in Ohio and it's pretty red. But in Northwest Ohio, I think I just got lucky. There's a lot of blue influence. So it's a lot of moderation. So, you know, I never had the the hellfires or pressures or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. So it was more, yeah, you go to church on Sunday, but uh, hey, you want to do science and magic all the rest of the week? Go ahead. So I, you know, I, I tell people, I, you know, I, I had a bit of luck in a lot of the things. And I had, you know, supportive parents. Um, uh, we were into bowling for a while. Um, my parents would drive us all around. My brother bowled in the Pro-Am the one year, you know, and hey, if we wanted to go do some, you know, we were in scouting. My parents were there um, playing sports. My parents, you know, they were there. They were always good, you know, supportive and everything and never, but never pushing anything. So we were allowed yeah. to take our own directions. And, um, you know, my, my brother was pretty much the same. He just stopped going to church too. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, it's funny. There's that verse in the Bible, uh, you know, when you, you know, put away away childish things, um, that's all I can remember off the top of my head. I'd have that's to look that's one of my favorite verses. Yeah. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish ways. Ah, see, so you remember it better than I do. So, yeah, there you go. Okay. I've forgotten most of, <laughs> of the Bible by now. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, you know, people ask me, and it's like, oh, I, I have terrible time quoting the Bible other than you know, in the beginning, I, but yeah, uh, I, I, I love the, uh, I used to love the lay me down and valleys and all that. And and now I just don't, I don't remember any of it. I just like, yeah, whatever. And I'll look it up. You know, I just don't, cause I don't, it, it doesn't matter to me anymore. So it's like, well, right. you know, uh, but yeah, was it really the internet that, how did you obtain or, or grasp onto this? I'm pretty, it- I'm pre-internet. Uh, yeah, yeah, pre-internet. Um, but when did you uh, grab the mantle, if you will, of of skeptic or atheist or non-theist, or was that even a thing until later on? Uh, when you you know was that when you got on the internet, you finally got that title or or label, or was it before that? How did that come about? Yeah, no, uh, we my internet was the uh, apologists would get a flatbed truck and they would find a parking lot. (laughs) And that's, that's where you had to go to engage them. So there was a uh, arcade that was a hangout for the, for the teenagers. And it was in a big shopping uh, plaza type thing. So of course, big parking lot, apologists showed up on their flatbed so that was that was one of my first engagements with uh arguing with religious people hmm don't walk me through that i mean what you know they came there to to preach at you know hey I, you know stay away I from was, that 
I was always, games. yeah, I was always pointing out flaws in what they were saying. And yeah, you know, I got the, the Sunday school teachers, I would ask them questions too, you know? So, mm. you know, I was always like, Hey, wait a minute, you know, you know, whatever it was, how did, how did Noah put all them animals on the boat? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, it just you, you just read the Bible, you know, and uh, you know, it's not adding up, you know. I, and I, then, so when I would hear them, whatever they were talking about, and you know, I did, I was not a Bible student or anything, but I had, <coughs> I had a fair idea of you know what what it was about. And uh, another thing that always bothered me, when it bothers you too, is the straw man. Oh yeah, you so, believe in fill in the blank? Yeah. Oh, I do. Really? I, yeah. Please tell me what I believe. Yes, I enjoy that. <laughs> the the straw man, the straw man against the scientists. I think was one of the one of the early things that bothered me uh, about apologists. Yeah, yeah, and, and, um, but it wasn't you know it wasn't creationism. Or anything like that. You guys no, I never, told. I never heard yeah. any of that nonsense. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now, see that you got to go way, way. I did not know. Um, like a, I, I had a uh, a girlfriend whose father was a living room preacher, whatever you want. You know, he would have the Bible studies and everything at his house. You know, mm -hmm. and I engaged with him a few times. He didn't like me too much. <laughs> But it was the same thing, you know. He would he would say, "Oh, well, you know this and that," and I would say, "Well, um, that's not that's not right." You know, science says something else. You know, and it was always that doesn't sound right. And then they would not like they would not like my question. But we're still on this, if you will. I think we're all all humans. Hold on a second. Hopefully. I say, sound like you dropped your mic. Okay, so we got dead air time. Yeah, yeah, dead air. Oh, oh there he is. <laughs> yeah, well, let's just pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> Edit. Sorry. <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> I'm so professional here. I was like, yeah, well, I was trying to put in my camera. I'm like, it's not working. I'll unplug it. Oh, that might unplug me. No, it won't. Oh, it did. <laughs> okay, Whoops. for my lesson. <laughs> well, I'm stuck with being uh, floating at any rate. All right. So I was gonna we we're gonna I was gonna uh reveal the true nature of reality and now I've forgotten. Oh well. Uh <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so I was I was inquisitive and and yeah, I was the kid that was always taking things apart and everything too, you know. So yeah, the, the I was mechanics. inquisitive. Yeah, was gonna, then yeah, also the, I got into um, you know, reading about um, other things like Nostradamus hmm. and the alien uh, ancient aliens. You know, uh, Chariots of the Gods was a big book, and everybody was reading it, and so I you know I read it and. It's like, oh, okay, but then again, I'm I'm asking questions because it's just the same old thing where they were just kind of passing everything they couldn't explain onto aliens rather than gods. Right. Yeah. And you start seeing a lot of the same arguments. You know, well, you know, they who built the pyramids? Have possibly done this. They couldn't right. possibly it had to be aliens. That, yeah. And then again, and I'm like, well, hmm. you know, wait a minute, ah, you know. Yeah. There's there's actually some depictions in some of the pyramids where they explain some things, you know. And it wasn't it wasn't magic, you know. They were using levers and pulleys, and so again, and then so you start hearing you know similar arguments. So then it's like, oh well, now wait a minute, you know. I just said I think all that yeah, you know, with all that coming together, that started forming my. Well, yeah, people believe this and believe that and believe that and believe that, but it's just nothing but people believing a lot of things. Yeah, I, I recently heard somebody say, "Oh, the Bible says, you know, we didn't, we couldn't count all the stars in the sky. We still haven't counted all the stars in the sky." It's like, um, so what? Yeah, I was just like, he found that to be amazing. It's like, oh, see how that's true. It's like. That's like 
like anybody can make that observation. There's a lot of stars. Like what, what are you getting at? Like, so what? Yeah. It was just like, but to him, it, 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 it was this kind of confirmation bias thing where it's like, well, this, this proves it's true. Cause it said a thing that was true. It's like, yeah, you can say things that are true, but the rest of it might not be true. <laughs> it's just that one part right. they got right. I mean, you know, you blindfold yourself and throw some darts at the wall, and if there's a dartboard up there, you might hit the dartboard at least once. <laughs> that doesn't make you a good thrower of darts, you know. And um, and then one- and then we had um, what was his name, Yuri, that was debunked on the Tonight oh, Show yeah. with, with the help of James Randi and all that, you know. So, right. Yeah, I went, yeah. I went through this, the you know all the mystical stuff that was going on in the seventies too. Including the spoon benders and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the and psychics and the medium. One after another, they're getting taken down. They're getting taken down. And it's like, you know, uh, more things adding in. It's like, oh, okay, you know. And then the more you look into it, yeah, these guys are just, again, they're just making a bunch of claims, but they, they can't really do the things they're saying. I remember a talk show guy, I think Mon Monroe or something. I don't, I don't know his name now offhand. I'd have to look it up. But he, he, he started doing just nothing but having mediums on like all the time. And I think he even had this one. Um, oh goodness, she was really popular, Sylvia or Sylvia. Is I don't know, but she at the she Long made, Island. Is that the Long Island psychic? Yeah, she was really like it was like you you know, had the nine hundred number and you know you charge like a thousand dollars to get like three minutes or one minute with her or whatever. Now she's she's one that actually said she would take the James Randy challenge and never did. But never did. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's her. I can't remember her her. I think it was a stage name. I don't know if it was her actual name. Uh, but yeah, I mean it's so it. And they, they, you know, and I think Oprah even had a medium on at one time, and they always acted like, "Whoa, how is this working?" And they were fooled by it. And then it mm-hmm. made the it made it seem more plausible and credible because it's on TV, and you know, and and but it was just like, ah, uh, you know. And then you kind of saw it when they were working and, and with put it in perspective audience. and put it in perspective, you know. A lot of a lot of this early stuff was when you only had a couple channels. Oh yeah, yeah, three this is, channels. You know, a lot of this stuff is pre-cable days. So yeah, yeah, if it was on TV, everybody was like, "Oh, oh yeah, this yeah. this made it on TV," you know. Yeah, and then it's not the like time, today. Yeah, and then when cable finally came, I mean, you know, then it was you know more, and it's kind of sad and funny, you know, to see how History Channel. Uh, derailed itself into the nonsense realm of you know aliens and then you know you got that meme floating around with that big you know guy with the afro you know holding his hands out me aliens everything is aliens and they went that route because it it was well it made the money it got the you know got people to watch and they had you know ghost catcher show after ghost catcher show it's like i yeah, watched they, ne- they never catch a ghost it's so funny they keep hunting but they never find one <laughs> I watched every episode of Finding Bigfoot. I'm a, I got my Bigfoot yeah. shirt on. Crypto, crypto, yeah, the crypto yeah, thing, got, the crypto zoology. Yeah, and and you can see a, big, you can see Bigfoot right there at my pond. Yeah, too. yeah, there he see is. Him. I see he's, him. He's Hi. hiding out back there. Yeah, he's now the just, whole Bigfoot, the whole Bigfoot thing is when I started doing my arguments, I started using Bigfoot. So every time I heard something ridiculous, like. Well, you don't know what started the universe. It has to be God. And I was like, I would say, no, 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 it's Bigfoot. Of course. And it and it really seemed to irritate apologists. So, you know, I was kind of ornery. So why not? Okay, I mean, so it, it could be Bigfoot. We don't know. That that's my argument. You can't prove it's not, right? All right. Just like, yeah. So then I kind of got into, you know, started getting more. You know, people give me Bigfoot stuff and everything. So now I have a bunch of Bigfoot shirts and Bigfoot mugs and Bigfoot hats and sweatshirts and a Bigfoot in my pond. And so yeah. that's kind of that's kind of where that all came from. And that's you know using that argument of well, yeah, you can't prove it's not Bigfoot. And when you use Bigfoot, which is just an, another supernatural claim, 
yeah. believers do not like comparing their beliefs to another claim or, or to magic. Yeah, or, or I, I, magic, I, I've been yeah. doing magic lately. I've been saying, yeah, well, it's just magic. And it's like, you know, I don't believe magic. I believe miracles. I'm like, yeah, really define miracle and define magic side by side. Right. See what happens. Right. Like they're, they're equivalently the same. And, you know, you say magic, you learned magic. Well, what you mean is you learned sleight of hand, you learn optical illusions, you learn tricks, you know, pick a card and, you know. Mentalism, which mentalism. Is, what, is what a lot of these uh, faith uh, healers and other uh, less than scrupulous uh, pastors and whatnot use. You, you can see it. They're using mentalism tricks. Now, one guy... Um, that Randy debunked where they were using uh, short rave radio to just, you know, her, the person wrote that what they wanted on the prayer cards, like suddenly the, the pastor knows it. So he's pop off. Is, yeah. Yeah. Pop off. Yeah. God's telling him what's going on. No, no, no. His wife's telling him what's going on. Name and did you, did and you hear after, how, even after being exposed, he still kept going and people oh, yeah. still believed. He, he is so disgusting. James Randy found in the dumpster uh, a bunch of checks because if it wasn't enough of a dollar amount on the check, like if grandma wrote a $2 check, they didn't spend the time endorsing it, cashing it and everything. They would just throw them in the garbage. It's just, yeah, that's, I mean, if I'm, it didn't glad have that the zeros, I'm glad the money didn't get spent, you know, but it yeah, is but, just, Gross. Yeah, if there wasn't enough zeros, yeah, they they didn't even bother cashing the checks. That's yeah. that's they just wanted, how they, 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 were. they they just wanted money, you know. And they found a con, you know, and and people. Oh, did. he's still around. He's on Is late it? night TV. So I thought he was uh, dead by now. Uh. No, no, he's he sells uh, what is it, the holy water, the prayer cloth, or you yeah, know, geez. one of those type things. Yeah, he's he's still kicking, still selling that crap. So now. The labels, let's talk a little bit about that because that's, you know, always sometimes or always slash sometimes a conversation of, you know, what is the word, you know, atheist? What is the word skeptic? What is, you know, agnostic atheist? You've got atheist. You've got all these terminologies. And some people just go, ah, whatever. I just don't believe in God. Let me, you know. So do, do you have a, do you, do you uh, grab onto a label and what does it mean to you or, do you care a lot about that? Yeah, I, you know, I I struggled and uh, I'm I I, I kind of lean anti theism, not anti theist because it's not personal. It's you know, it's it's a belief or an ideal that I have a problem with. Okay. So I've kind of settled on anti theism because I think religions are outdated. Yeah. Any any useful thing they served, like, you know, from from attempts at medicine and psychology and, and all those kind of things have all been replaced. Mm. Yeah, well, not, uh, not the belief, not the belief in God or anything like that. You want to you want to believe in God? You want to believe in Bigfoot? I don't really care. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, it's do when you... it goes beyond that. And it's well, God told me. You know, don't go to the doctor. Or God told me to tell you not to go to the doctor. You know what I mean? When any, anything where it leaves just what you believe, that is something that every you know, well, not everybody, but most people around the world hold some kind of belief to this and that, then that's fine. But yeah, when any any attempt to go one step beyond and telling anybody else what to do. And right. I think that there's, you know, obviously the conflict arises. Yeah. And once you have the conflict, it can just build and, you know, divisiveness and all the ugliness and everything else. So, well, uh, a, a possible pushback might be, you know, well, churches uh, provide uh, shelter to homeless people you know, when they're not holding services, which so I we, have nothing against. Yeah. So it's like, I well, have, if we, if we shut down the churches, then who will do that? Who? You right. Know? Well, it's a good and, question. And, it is. A and good there question. are a lot of, there are a lot of good religious people who do things, you know, helping people and everything. And that, that's great. And uh, there's, I, I don't know anybody 
that's a non-believer that would say, hey, you church people, quit helping those people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I suppose, I've never heard that. Yeah, I suppose the argument might be that if we really wanted to get rid of religion, we have to find a, a non-religious replacement for these, you know, for this. And and I, I think there's, there's a fair criticism there. And I, I don't really know what that would be or how, you know, who would start it or how it would get going because... Well, it requires some money, it requires, you know, an effort and energy and time and, you know, and all that's already been, it's already kind of been done by the church. So they're providing this service. Maybe one day that's what they will be, will be just that service. And the whole, you know, churchy part will kind of fade away. I, I don't know. It's going to, it's going to evolve. It's going to change because that's what it, things yeah. do. You know? That's what it does. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was going to say. It, the, be, the believers don't see it in their own real time. But if they do a little investigating, you'll see that all religions have changed. And they've, you know, the ones that couldn't agree on things, they divvied up into sects and denominations and everything else down the line. Yeah. So I, I, I saw a uh, dying church. I mean, literally dying. All, everybody in it was really like, in their like you know 70s 80s whatever they were like old old people and there there was nobody you know the past everybody i was the youngest person there uh when mm. i went well, this was some years ago so i was younger then but <laughs> you know but uh i think that like the youngest guy that uh, he he was like you know 20 years older than i was at the time you know whatever but he was like, I think in his forties, I was in my twenties or whatever. And it was just like, there was five people there and, you know, it was like, nobody was coming. They were like, how do we get people to come? You know, I don't know. You know, we don't play string instruments, you know, cause we don't believe in that. Just sing, you know, cause string instruments, that's bad. And all these other weird ideas they had. And it's like, why are we dying out? Well, I can think of a few reasons, you know, but, yep. uh, you know, they need, and so it's like, well, they'll eventually literally just die out, um, you know, and, and, and nobody, and that will be the end of that story. Uh, and, and churches that don't change, you know, they get splintered because they had been splintered from another church because mm -hmm. they, they'd had that disagreement. They were a bigger church. And the disagreement was on stringed instruments, of all things. Like, oh, we play stringed instruments. No, don't play stringed instruments, you know, because uh, that's bad. So they, they split off from that. And then now they're, they're still a tiny dying church. They're probably gone by now, I'd imagine. You know, it's been a number of years unless they're, I mean, I guess they might be hanging on to life. I don't know. But I don't imagine they have any new members. Uh you know, because it's boring. Nobody wants to go. I mean, why would you go? It's, it's not interesting. It offers nothing for the young. It, you know, it's not charismatic. It, it, it's just the same old, you know, stuff. It's very, very small. Uh, like, you know, it's just one room. They, they you know, they're, they're renting a room or whatever. And, you know, so of course it's going to die. But people, you know, will say things like, oh, we need, you know, religion in schools. That's the problem. Like, no. What? You know, because I think that the complex issues like with all the horrible gun violence, you know, that happens and people try to figure out, well, how how do we fix that? They want a simple answer. It's, well, obviously, if we just had God in schools, this would never happen. That's right. the answer. Well, no, that's that <laughs> has nothing to do with that. You know, uh, it doesn't. That doesn't explain what I, when it happens at a church. Either. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's you know violence has been committed at churches. So, well, why does why does that happen? Like we have to address the the cause, not the you know. It's like well, you know, it's it's because the devil is doing all these things and running the world, and you know it, these easy answers to complicated questions that seem to attract. A scary number of people to them and it is the the reasoned voices out there that are just saying well what about you know and and asking those questions like you do and and and, and perhaps like i do you know trying to get people to think myself to think others to think and you know it's just you know i 
I, I somebody near and dear to me just recently had said, well, you know, you see a rock, you know, it's from something, you know, you see a bird poop, you know, it's from a bird. And it's like, yeah, but maybe things aren't that simple. Maybe they're where, you know, it's far more complex when you look deeper into it. And know? that's, and that's a great thing about, you know, doing science is, is finding an answer. Yeah. And now, it's the, like, they're, they're always believers, especially will, will always bring up, well, the, you know, you, there's the big questions out there. You know, where does life come from? Where did the universe come from? Well, that's what the scientists do. Well, the complaint there is that science answers the how, but not the why. Why are we here? What's our purpose? And I'm like, oh, make, well, you, you make your own why. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, what's wrong with that? I think some people want to be told their why they want to be told their purpose and they don't want to find it for themselves uh one, one of my favorites to listen to uh addressing that question is peter atkins what does he say he says nonsense <laughs> yeah scientists um, don't scientists don't care about this stuff you know yeah you start uh, you start asking why and what's the meaning and everything? And it's like, they don't care. That, that, yeah. that You don't answer that in the lab. Yeah. The why of why we, why am I me, isn't yeah. really a, I mean, there, there's a mechanic to that. To, to some degree, I can answer a lot of that. But then it's like, well, why am I me and not a cat? Well, because that's not how I was born. <laughs> I wasn't born uh, as a cat. You know, it's like... He, Peter Atkins pulls no punches. He says, uh, no real scientist believes in God. Wow. <laughs> that's that's pretty pretty tough. Yeah. Yeah, well what would what would it be if there was let's 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 go down that, that road a little bit. Um, I, you want to know my my opinion of God? Is it mm. uh, I'll give it to you very easily. I I agree with what Siddhartha concluded twenty nine hundred years ago. He listened to all the religious experts. They all gave their best arguments. And he said, if a God exists or not, it doesn't change reality. Yeah. So when I hear believers say, well, God is outside of our universe, outside of space, outside of time, outside our dimension, and all these things, then I say for all intents and purposes, it doesn't exist because it's not doing anything here. So even if I, if I grant you, okay, there's something we don't know that's outside of our universe. Who, who cares? Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to be um, interacting with us in any way that's uh, right. De detectable, you know, and of course now for the individual, they're like, Oh, well I, I, I interact. It's like, well, Every every believer interacts with their belief, of course, sure. you know. Yeah. But you know, if it was a real actual thing, like, well, what would it be? Would it be energy? Would it be, you know, it'd have to have some physics to it. There'd have to be, you know, laws that govern it. So right. so even if it was an entity, it'd still, you know, it, it well, it'd still be an entity. It wouldn't have no brain and have something, you know, and, and the way that they describe uh, a lot of the monotheists have described God into non-existence at this point. Cause if it's, you know, outside space times, like, okay, there's no where, no when for it to be. Good job. I agree. It doesn't exist anymore. Right. <laughs> uh, exactly. I'm like, if so it like exists, it has to exist in some meaningful way, somewhere, some when, somehow it has to have, you know, what is it made out of? Well, it's made out of soul. Well, what's that? What is that made out of? How does that work? Right. What are the that's, that's what I ask is what what are the rules of the supernatural, first of all? Yeah, because it has because to interact in, with... in, in, yeah, in the universe, we can say, well, you know, we have laws of physics, laws of logic, whatever and stuff. But if you step outside of the universe, then do they still all apply? Or are there other rules? Because it seems that the supernatural defies... Uh, lots of the laws of logic, laws of physics, and everything else. So, yeah, it can do. It can do all these. What are the rules? Yeah, it can do all these and mysterious if, things until you test it, and then it can't right. do anything. And if yeah. there are no rules, then you can't discredit other things. You can't right. say 
there aren't other gods and there aren't other, you know, all down the list. You know, there aren't other Bigfoots, there aren't other angels, there aren't other what, you know, a million and one things. Well, what about because ESP? If there's no or, rules, then. Yeah. What about ESP or, or uh, you know, mental well, uh, telekinesis and pyrokinesis? Come on, at least humans. Come on. Can't we do something with our our minds alone and move things around. No, nothing there. No, 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 nothing going on just because we haven't proven it. <laughs> right. Well, a, a reading the mind, I think could actually be one that is the closest to being possible because we can almost do that with reading electrical impulses and everything in the brain, you know, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, that you know it technologically we're gonna get there probably i i mean yeah, i've seen things where they had it, some it would be yeah. maybe possible that somebody could have you know some kind of way to read those impulses you know although yeah. i don't maybe it would be make more sense like if, if they uh touched them yeah you know some so sort of I, I think built. that They'd have to have yeah. some sort of circuit built into them. Our, our, so that one, that one may be, uh, it could, it could be a perfectly natural thing that could be explained by science. Yeah, that, that one I give probably out of all of them, the the biggest or biggest chance of a possibility. Um, some people go into the, you know, the sort of science woo uh, side of things where. There have been and are people experimenting on themselves with implanting various chips in their brains and hands. And, you know, they can do some stuff like, you know, unlock doors or whatever. If the door is programmed, you know, they can start their car or whatever. Uh, And some of these devices have been used for medical advancement. And some people are saying, well, this is the, quote, next evolution of humans and it's like well i don't know if it's evolute i mean it's a change but it's an artificial change it, it you know what do what do you make of this is this is this a you know should we be implanting uh ships into our our kids uh <laughs> which, you know or, or is this something that maybe we well, should mess with all i can say is elon's experiments with the monkeys didn't turn out very good so <laughs> maybe the technology is not there yet yeah. but um you know doing doing stuff with um you know um what, what would you call it putting uh like a jumper in somebody that's paralyzed you know yeah and and reconnecting things uh stuff like that that i'm all for but yeah. i think i don't think yeah they i don't think they've proven that they should be sticking anything in anybody's brain quite yet yeah, they did. They, I did see this artificial uh, womb for a sheep that they they. That was developed. cool. Have you seen that? Yeah. 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 Now see, that was a good argument for um, pro life. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay, if you don't want to have the abortion, right? You can, you can take, do take this it out, instead. put right. it in yeah, artificial that's, womb. That's what I've said that but about. Yeah. Guess who was having a fit about that? in the article the religious <laughs> the, the religious yeah, people. Yeah. i'm like you're, saying you're playing god here's your, of course. Here, yeah, yeah here's your solution though yeah <laughs> i i can't yeah i was like look if you're gonna be pro-life i get it because i you know life is of some value i don't know exactly what how did you figure that out but yes i get it you know yeah. okay we don't want to destroy it okay because there's a potential there we don't know we hope for the best we don't know but okay mm-hmm. uh so Shouldn't you then be throwing money at research that could, let's see, turn off the reproductive system at will and turn it back on at will? Like some sort Mm of code that you could just imagine and it would turn on or off or button that you could press or whatever, you know, and uh, wouldn't you throw money at these artificial wombs and things like this so that there would be an alternative out there? And, you know, of course, there'd be a thing you'd have to sign saying, you know, I don't, you know, that, that way you're not financially responsible or whatever. You know, it's just like if you gave it up for adoption. And, sure. you know, well, the adoption system is also a, a complete 
mess and uh, uh, group homes are a mess and, and that, you know, the regulation there and the, the structure there needs to be fixed. So why not put your efforts and energy on fixing that system? Then when all that's fixed, then you can say, hey, look, you know, all right, we've got all these alternatives. Now maybe you can't kill the kid because you, you do this instead. It's like, all right, well, you know, okay. You know, it's like, you know, if it was as simple as a shot, getting a shot at the doctor, it's like, you know, you know, and that's all you had to do instead of, you know, well, because you're going to have to go to the doctor if you want an abortion anyway. So it's like, well, it's the same difference. It's a different procedure. It takes it out of you and, you know, puts it somewhere else instead of destroying it. Okay, well, there you go. It's simple. Done. No. No, because that's playing God. You can't do that. Ah, you know. <laughs> well, what you and it's the same. It's the same, with, <laughs> it, it's the same with social programs and sex ed and uh, health classes. It's the same thing. You want a solution? Well, here's something that's proven to work. If yeah. you actually teach kids, hey, you know, here's a, hormones here's a- are going to run through you and all this, but you know what? At least put on a condom, right? Yeah. And if you yeah. tell kids that, now, now and it's not going to work 100%, nothing is. But you right. know, just like I did when I was a teenager, you put one in your pocket just in case, right? <laughs> right. The old joke, right? The ring in your wallet, right? You, yeah. You care, you, you, and it, it, it's stuck in our heads. Yeah. But now, who are the same people same, that don't want yeah, to ab- teach that? Right. Absence only has failed epically. You know, there's more. It's been shown, you know, more, more team births occur in absent only. And then the and when I, they, they talked to XED, it was like way, way like down to like almost, you know, zero, zero, zero point one percent or whatever. And it's like, well, there you go, religious people. What do you want? Do you, do you want your kids mm-hmm. to have uh, kids? No, you don't want that. Do you? No, they don't. Well, then you got to teach them about sex. Oh, but then the, the baby Jesus will cry or something. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, well. Well, if Jesus doesn't want you, you know, whatever. He can come down and stop us. How about that? All right. Let's, let's do what makes sense. Okay. But yeah, it's just these few. Well, I mean, it's enough people to to screw things up, you know, if you will, you know, that, that just have odd ideas, you know, and, 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 and there's remnants all over society. You know, there's no floor 13. There's, you know, and 666, ooh, and, you know, all these silly little things. You know, maybe not walk under a ladder only because the ladder might collapse or something. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> some get dropped on your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's Ricky yeah. a mirror. It's just expensive. Okay, mirrors are expensive, but no, you're not gonna get. You know, uh, my favorite was there was this chair where everybody that had ever sat in the chair they had died in some horrible way eventually and i'm like really how long did it take them to die you know so it's this chair is hanging from the ceiling in this one place you can go and see it at this museum like everyone that sat in a chair died yeah well that's true of every chair (laughs) right (laughs) it's like oh but they died in a terrible way i'm like well (laughs) that's that's all hits and misses it's classic let me sit in the chair i want to test it (laughs) how long should i wait until the terrible fate happens well, well it's, it, that's it, like uh, near death near yeah. death experiences everybody hears all the hype about it but that's another hit and miss because most people who you know right. have cardiac arrest or anything they don't remember yeah. anything the non-report doesn't happen i have to say that all the mm-hmm. time it's like you know we don't hear about you know the person doesn't call up the news and says i, I died oh really yeah nothing happened uh, okay, okay. Well, I'm I'm waiting for Harry <laughs> for Harry Houdini to come back because yeah. he said he promised if there was a way to contact from the beyond, he was going to figure it out and mm. he was going to do it. And Maybe. they had the séances for years and years after his death and he didn't do it. So if Maybe. Harry couldn't figure it out, yeah. Maybe he is Bigfoot. He's Harry so there you go. Big, I mean, big, maybe big. he's Bigfoot. Yeah, came back as Bigfoot. There you go. He's a hairy, a hairy Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, well, uh, um, 
let's get a now, little bit. Okay, well, back to the now we were at cable yeah. TV. I wanted to yeah, tell cable, you about cable TV. TV. Back to cable TV, right? It <laughs> was cable TV that I first saw Ken Ham on oh. a local Christian channel. So it wasn't until I was older until I ever heard of anybody that was pushing you know such a literal nonsense because it, to me even people who went to church on sunday didn't discount the science the rest of the week and then right. here here he was and it was like holy moly and then because he set up his things that are kind of nearby me a couple hours away he kind of became my nemesis because you know ray comforts in california hovens are down south um uh what's his uh the guy in texas um so well he's nearby so he kind of became my nemesis and, oh. and then oh. i got to a point where he blocked me everywhere uh, yeah. i can't even i can't even see his pages anymore i'm i'm Which super blocked now? ken ham oh ken ham 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 i was like I can't do a he's, ham. I can do a hoven. I can't do a ham. He he's got about a half a dozen different pages and stuff, and yeah, he he's got me blocked everywhere. And so, and I don't know. Usually, if you're blocked, you can still see a page. You know, I can't even see it anymore. So I got super blocked. It's so weird that he doesn't believe in evolution because he looks like uh you know crow magnum man or something he really does that guy, he the, does he just looks like crow magnum man you know i, I don't like to make fun of anybody's looks or anything no, but he not. has a terrible beard and you know if if you that's can't grow I'm, a decent beard shave okay that's, <laughs> yeah, i'm not i'm not i'm not making fun of it i'm just saying like, that's what he looks like that's like know? i i don't have it i don't have it here either so you know it's just here you know i i i'm not you know i'm not gonna grow that you know, Ken Ham thing over on the side of my face. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So anyway, that do you, do you think he should, that was uh, that was that was mind blowing? And then then came with the internet, and then here he is, and then it's like, so yeah, I was I was all on him on every you know, and I was I wasn't uh, uh, you know I wasn't being. Uh, overly a jerk or you know using cuss words or nothing you know i would post things like you know there's other creation myths boop i'm you know i'm blocked i'm deleted and it's like wow okay <laughs> yeah they don't even yeah. they don't even want to discuss because they want to set up it's either science or it's their story hmm. forget all the other stories don't even mention those other stories because about oh. every god has a creation story, right? Right. If it's your God, surely your God made everything. So if you add up how many gods there's been, then there's about how, that how many creation stories, right? I mean. Yeah. So, I mean, they don't that, like hearing that. No, 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 no. You, of course, the question you, that comes up with, with these types is, you know, do you think that they're, at some level of charlatan or does he believe some of this stuff and it's always like i don't you know who knows but what do you what do you do you, do you get into that at all or do you does it matter at the end of the day if he believes or not like his own crap because he he's shoveling it out there so is he just doing it for the money does he believe in it i mean what um well uh, ken ham believes what henry morris and his dad told him so, you know, Henry Morris wrote the flood book, right? And Ken Ham's father was uh, what I call a, a living room preacher. And to, you, I can understand honoring, you know, what your father taught you. You know what I mean? Yeah. My father taught me the first things about how to work on a car. Okay. But when I became a mechanic, my dad brought his car to me because he said, I can't work on these things anymore. And I don't think Ken Ham ever got beyond the, 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 uh, I don't, I guess it's kind of honorable, you know, honoring his father's words or whatever. Yeah. He just could never get past the fact that his father could have been wrong. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or that he just didn't, you know, uh, adjust with the times. So Ken Ham is stuck back in the 50s and 60s with yeah. Henry he's, Morris he's, and his father. He's stuck in his own little sphere. There he is with the Crow Magnum Man. Just, I, I just wanted to prove my point. It looks like him. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it looks like well, him, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I I guess all, right, all right, all right. Not everybody can grow a good beard, you know. I mean, it, and there's no shame in shaving. So yeah, but yeah, he's he, he's I don't know. I don't hear a lot about him uh, more. Well, than, you know, now he's a big problem. Yeah, because he's a leader in selling creationist materials and his creationist homeschooling materials. Mm, that's that's scary. Should there be so whether you know who he is or not, mm, whether you yeah. care who he is or not, and what I heard for a long time is what who cares what this guy believes, right? He's just some guy out there. Well, here's yeah. the problem he's one of the leading suppliers of YEC, the young earth creationist version that is completely anti science. They say they like science. No, they don't. But YEC doesn't believe every field of science. It's There's pseudo- not a field of science they agree with. No science, yeah. I mean, and I made a video on it. It's my pride and joy video. Go check it out. Yeah, go subscribe to Captain I Desk. Did, do it. I did a video on what my opinions are on YEC, and I think it's nothing but a grift. Oh yeah. And worse than that. It gets to the point of harming people because it gets so uh, anti-science that people, like I said earlier, stop going to the doctor, stop taking their kids to the doctor, stop right. listening to the doctor. And then that's where I, yeah, uh, you know, I, I have a problem and it's, you know, to the old saying, what, what you do is your business. Okay. And what I do is my business. But when your business becomes my business, it's no longer just your business. Right. Paint your so house you, purple. What, don't make me paint my house purple. Sure. <laughs> you know. Right. So, yeah, that's why I said, you know, like I said earlier, when they cross in that line and YEC crosses it way too far and they're anti-LGBTQ, um, it, that just causes problems. And but they, 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 they do nothing good. Mm. There's, there's nothing good. You can't even say, you know, they're welcoming and inviting like the church I went to. Because yeah. they don't even do that. They're up there hellfire. And if you don't do this and this and this and, you know, that person and that person and that, you're, you're all going to hell, you know. So it's uh, there, there's nothing good out of YEC. It, it just pads bank accounts. Mm. And that trickles all the way down. And I tell people right down to Donnie deals right to his face on as close as I can online. It's you get, you're just grifting people. All right. Well, wrapping up here, uh, captive Dave desk desk date, Dave. See, Oh, what does it mean? I'm going to go back in my conspiracy box and figure it out. I will figure it out. I'll f- anyway. Uh, what would be, Let's let's pretend that the the video is is seen a hundred years from now. What words of wisdom do you have to offer for the future? No 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 pressure. Uh, don't believe the hype. Check All things right. out. Yeah. If one person is saying something, it might be true, but check out and see if anybody else thinks what they're saying is true is true it's it's not hard to do anymore you spend a couple minutes online and uh, a good way to fact check things online is if the only source the person is giving is themselves it's a terrible source don't listen to them okay well, everyone's going to subscribe to you. Uh, you're going to get more subscribers than I'll ever have. And that's fine. I'm okay with that. You know, do it. Do Give him money, whatever he wants. You know, do all the things. Thank well, just, so- just to be clear, I, I, 
just to be clear, the reason I did my channel is because I put my money where my mouth is. Okay. I've critiqued other people and their channels and their opinions and their views and their religions and everything else. So I said, you know what? I should put myself out there too. So right. What I put myself out there and you know, if somebody wants to critique or disagree or disprove anything I post or say, I I welcome it. And if I'm wrong, I don't want to be wrong. Yeah, you learn something new. It's, yep. it's good. Yeah. All right. Yep. Thank you so much for your time and energy to do this. It was an interesting exploration of phone ringing in the background. Hold on. I and mean, we'll just edit that out. Hold on. <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate you having me on. It's always good talking with you. Yeah, I, uh, I like your content, and I like you, and uh, we'll do more things at some point. Maybe. I don't know what's going on anymore. And uh, thanks, everybody, and we'll do stuff. I don't have an outro. I, 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 there's, <laughs> I, there's no and I don't. Ha I melt down like into an incoherent mess at the end of some video. I don't. I need an ending. I need a way to hey, hit the Let's all be let's all be groovy to each other. Yeah, let's be groovy to each other. That's a good way to do. All right, goodbye, everybody. I'm gonna hit the button and.